Well, after six years uh, at Virginia with Bronco Mendenhall staff and uh, last year at Boise State, hey, Kelly Papinga played BYU the last two seasons. He's back at BYU coaching the defensive ends. I talked to him after practice on Friday. All right, Kelly, uh, back at BYU. How's your uh, first spring ball back been? It feels uh, like I never left, honestly. The only, the only difference is I don't see Bronco anywhere. So I'm like one, <laughs> wondering around where Bronco is, but no, it's been awesome, man, just to be around Kalani and the rest of the coaches, learn from them, learn a kind of a different way to do things here, but there's a ton of similarities. And uh, it's just fun to, li you know, I've never been around Kalani before and, you know, a lot of these coaches and just being able to learn from him and just his process of doing it and the way that he's built his culture, it's it's a pretty awesome thing. And, and uh, you know, I'm, it, for me, it's just another opportunity to learn and grow. And, and uh, there's been, you know, I think when you're uncomfortable and you don't know things, that's the biggest time to grow. And, uh, yeah, it's been uncomfortable at times just kind of learning the new th new system and new culture and all that, but it's been fun, man. And uh, and uh, just being out on the field today, this is our first time out on the field, being back out here. I just remember all the practices as a player and as a coach and all those memories are coming back. So it's been, it's been great, man, to be honest. The hope is previous teams, coaches, eras build on each other to continue to evolve. How has this program evolved since you left? Man, I would say uh, up front, I think we're bigger and more talented on both sides, honestly. Um, that's where I've seen the biggest difference. And, you know, I just continue to look at, uh, you know, the quarterbacks just continue to keep rolling in, you know, and that's, I think, something BYU will always have the tradition of. Um, I think with system changes, there's some edge players that we'll need to get that maybe the last scheme didn't, you know, ask to have certain type of edge players, but we'll, uh, I think we'll get that as the years go on. But I would say the, the main thing that I've just seen is just the, the culture that Kalani has, not that the culture in the past was bad, because the way the Bronco did it, I thought was great as well. And everybody has a different way to do things, but you can just say, see the guys here really love and care for each other and are really out there um, playing for each other. And uh, it's been really fun for me to see that, and that's something Kalani emphasizes all the time, is just the love that they have for each other and for the game and to be able to show it when they come out here on the practice field. Let's unpack a few of those things. When you played at BYU and in the 2000s, BYU certainly felt like a Power 5-like program. You've been at Virginia uh, in a Power 5 league. How is BYU maybe more prepared now than they were, say, in the 2000s to be a Power 5 program? Yeah, I, I, I look at our old line and just – I would always look at our starters here and be like, okay, we're good. But after that, I'd be like, oh, you know, I'd be a little worried. Uh, but here it just seems like we're, we're, we're deeper than we've ever been, from my perspective, at that position um, and from what I remember. And then I'd say the same, similar thing on the defensive line front is like I just think we're bigger and we, we're strong. And uh, then I look at the depth at running back. I think our depth at running back reminds me of when we were in uh, the Mountain West. I was actually thinking about like Manasseh and Fui and Harvey and Curtis Brown, that crew. I mean, this crew I think is very similar to that. I, and so I guess to answer your question the best is like I just think the depth in general is better at all positions um, where back in the day I think you have a position like running backs that could be pretty stacked but there would be other positions where you were worried man if that starter went down you were like oh boy we're going to be in trouble but here I just feel like another guy's going to be able to plug in and be able to keep this thing rolling. And that, that's certainly the goal. And at quarterback, it feels like if you got as good of a guy as they possibly could have gotten in the transfer portal with Keaton Slovis coming off of Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall, what have you seen from him offensively on, well, on the yeah. defensive side of the ball? He, it's impressive, man. I mean, the guy comes right in here and I think has picked up um, right where Jaron and, and Zach left off. Honestly, I think the guy can sling it. He's super smart. He runs way better than you think. And so, you know, all the, you know, run game stuff that they've done in the past, it's still there. And I don't know if they want me to say that or not. Maybe cut that out now. But, I mean, he's, he's ran the ball on us a couple times, like with QB draws and zone reads, where we're like, man, this guy runs better than we thought. And so just continue to have that weapon. And, and then you have the other guys that came in, too, as well. I think that, you know, we got three new quarterbacks here, and I don't think we missed on one of them. And I think uh, BYU fans are going to see that all three of those guys throw the ball very similar to the last two guys that were the starters here. Okay, Jay Hill's been very open about the aggressive attacking mindset of this defense. Um, how, how would you sort of characterize, uh, I guess, those words or otherwise, um, kind of what this defense is going to bring to the table this season? Yeah, I think exactly what Coach Hill said. We're going to attack, we're going to be aggressive, and, and today we were working um, – a four-minute situation, meaning we're down as a defense at the end of the game. we got to stop and get the ball back to the offense. So really, it's run game, 
and just being the the style that he was calling it the aggressiveness of that and then we had a third down situation the other day and just how aggressive he was in calling that and the success that he was putting our players in position to make plays and um, different from what I've seen you know I've I've kind of come from a uh, from schemes where there's a balance of of different things and different tempos we're here there's different tempos but it seems like there's a lot more aggression so we'll see how those things continue to be called even in games but it seems like you know he's come from that that uh from that other school where they're you know pretty aggressive with the way they call things and you know i know he had that same success at weber um but just seeing how that all flows in a practice and in a game situation you can see that this is this is an attacking style defense we're not going to sit back and let somebody just run on us right we're going to we're going to make sure that there's there's something in their face as a quarterback or there's multiple gaps being filled as linebackers or DN. So, you know, it's really hard for a running back to be able to find a spot to pick a hole. Okay, we're talking to Kelly Papinga, defensive ends coach uh, on the BYU football team. Okay, let's talk about your group specifically. Who's in the mix and who's making progress this spring? Yeah, so Tyler Batty, uh, consistent. Uh, need to get him to continue to work in his pass rush stuff. I think his run game he's very polished he was one of the highest graded pff players in the country last year uh in the run game now got to get that complemented with a better pass rush um and then isaiah Bag uh, bagna coming from boise state has stepped right in and has fit right in and has been making plays all over the place and then uh new uh sell sell Another transfer from Weber State, but he's come right in, guy that played for Coach Hill back in the day, and he's now been here, and he knows the system, he knows the scheme, he's fit right in and done great. And then Ice Moa has done a really good job, and then uh, Blank Bagelsing as well. I would say those five guys, and Bodie Schoonover the last couple of days, mm -hmm. man. So I think there's five or six guys right there where I feel really, really comfortable with, and there's some younger guys that need to get healthy and need to develop, but, um, and then I'm really anxious to get, um, the daily kid off of his mission, John Henry, um, John Henry yep. cause I, I remember seeing him when I was at Virginia and thinking, God, I'd love to have this guy, but you know, so that guy obviously will be, you know, um, somebody that's going to take some time just coming along with mission. But I think the position is in a really good spot, um, with maybe another addition possible. We'll see how that all plays out through the portal and how we think we end up with spring. But I feel, I feel really good with the top six guys right now. As the wind picks up here is the, uh, expectation that there should be more uh, a higher sack number uh, from what BYU's had in the past. Is that a fair ask, or is it the ball comes out quick sometimes, yeah. sometimes you don't get sacks? Yeah, I think in the, this day and age in college football, the ball is coming out so fast, um, especially against teams like us that know that we're going to be aggressive and we're going to attack. And so um, I don't think um, – I, I call them havoc plays. Havoc mm -hmm. plays are their sacks, their QB hits, their PBUs, right? All those things fumbles that have too. fumbles, yes, interceptions, like yeah. all those things that affect a quarterback, those are the things that we're looking for. So people get so hyped up about the sack number where you got to also look at, okay, how many PBUs do we have? Because mm -hmm. if we're getting PBUs, that means the quarterback's throwing the ball probably uh, sooner than he ever wanted to. Um, if we're getting, uh, you know, quarterback hits, right? All those things affect the quarterback. Uh, we've got a miniature tornado over know, here. Being outside, being outside is awesome. <laughs> we've literally, yeah, we're going to swing it. Look at this thing. <laughs> this is the first mini tornado in BYU Sports Nation history. Uh, doesn't rival the Salt Lake one in the 90s. But, but yeah, it's it's been <laughs> – trying to get back to my focus here. But hey, being outside I was, awesome. just, I, afraid, I was like thinking we were going to be the Wizard of Oz and I was going to be Dorothy <laughs> swept away right there, man. You didn't have enough courage. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I think, you know, as fans, they just got to remember. It's not always about the sack numbers. I do think they'll be bigger because just we're going to be attacking more. Different, and it's just different style. But remember, there's always QB hits. There's interceptions. There's PBUs. There's all these other things that affect the quarterback that it's not always comes down to sacks. So I think the fans got to look at the whole picture. I'm just glad we did not see a chariot of fire there and uh, send in flames. That, that was crazy. Kelly, thanks for the time. Yeah, thank you.